Today I had to replace a few emergency exit signs, but also I had to replace the battery on an exit light. And these nickel cadmium batteries, it's funny, the uh, new ones, the wires are backwards, but I got it to work in the end but with a soldering iron. Now the old batteries, they're nickel cadmium, and the new ones are too if I remember right, but the old batteries, they're probably still good. Just like I can bring back these Makita batteries just by taking them down to zero volts, charging them, taking them back down, charging them again. Nickel cadmium, and I believe nickel metal hydride as well, they, they stay healthy from use. They have what's called memory. So these batteries stay fully charged for years and years on end. This battery was put in there in 2013. And whenever I measure the voltage, it has no power whatsoever. I have this little motor from an Arduino kit and yeah, it, it doesn't even move it at all. I can, I think I can tell that it has a, a tendency to go one way or the other, but it seems like it has almost no power. So what we want to do is we want to take this down to zero volts. Let's check what the voltage is though. So we have a voltage of 2.84 volts. Honestly, what I'm going to do is, with it being such low voltage and such a small battery, I'm just going to jump the two wires together. I thought I had a bad connection, but no, nope. with that in, it is three millivolts. Okay, so let's plug that in. And it's been about two hours and it's down to 0.7 volts. Now we're gonna give it a recharge. That's not right. Well, this battery is quite sickly. When I do a discharge test, it doesn't even get a, a single milliamp hour and only goes two seconds down to zero volts. Oh, the plot thickens. I removed this and they are Tenergy cells and only one of them is getting hot. So, I let it sit overnight. I did several cycles and it was something to do better, but only one of them is getting hot. All right, now nah, that's more reasonable. So this one, this one is bad. Well guys, during the day, Thice continued the experiment and I had already begun doing a few charges and discharges. As you can see, the first one, it charged 112 milliamp hours, a little bit more because it was starting from around zero. And then it discharged 48 milliamp hours for these, these three cells in series. And then I charged 91 and got 69 out. Well then it just started taking forever. It put 946 milliamp hours in and it wasn't getting hot, so it was going somewhere. I left, and Thice finished it off. When I left, it was at 300. It ended up being 946, and now we're on the discharge. We're at 291. So these have already gotten at least one third of their capacity back. It's a shame this one didn't last, but, well, you know, a percentage of them do die. If any of the packs that we have don't have any ones that are broken, such as the, this one Tenergy cell, then it shouldn't be too difficult to revive this entire pack enough for it to last a few more years. Because after all, this is cadmium, and I'd like to go as long as possible without having to throw this away or, 
recycle it when there's there's no option to recycle it around here so i want to keep these being used as long as possible at least make that environmental catastrophe as worthwhile as possible let's see 605 milliamp hours wow hope so already out I think at this rate we can go up to 0.4. Now going up to 0.4 may make the numbers not as big, but it'll get this done with quicker. 690. Okay. Hey Thais, could I set this to discharge and you write it down after? Okay. We're going to go up to 0.4 amp. And then I'm going to go to bed because I am tired. So again, we might not get as much power out as we would expect just because we're going to 0.4 of an amp. But we'll go through a little quicker. And then I'll leave that for you to uh, to do in like an hour or so, whenever. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. If it beeps, then. Yeah, if it beeps. If not, if you go to bed before then, we can just do it in the morning. Okay. And then I think we're gonna go after this. We're gonna go down to zero. I'm at my friend's electronics workshop and. These are the old batteries. We're gonna test those next. And these are the new ones. They have the connectors on backwards. So I have to flip them around. But I just realized, you know, from now on, I think I'm gonna get a four series AA battery container. So we can just put double A's in there. And if one cell breaks, we can keep using it just for replacing one cell. Also good news, the, uh, my, my friend also mentioned that Staples has started doing battery recycling, so they're taking batteries to recycle at, at Staples, and I took that one dead nickel cadmium battery and threw that in the bunch. So we're, we're even, I even get to show in the video that, yes, I recycled the batteries. So let's get, this, let's get this one done too, and then put these back in, and we can play with these. And there we have it all flipped around. So with the old batteries, when you press the button, it would just stay lit for about three seconds and then go out. Without it, of course, it goes out instantly. But then with this, actually, how should I do this? This cable's longer. Hmm. Now it stays on. The issue comes from the fact that the batteries stay fully charged for years on end. And the, the old batteries were put in in 2013. So it just kind of fries them with the memory effect. Well guys, I'm going through the building and apparently it's, it's time to replace the batteries and all these smoke alarms because they tend to go off every two years. And so once every two years, uh, my friend replaces all the smoke alarm batteries. So I'm just going through and replacing them for him because he's a little busy. And so we have all these batteries and uh, some of them, I mean, they're, they're mostly dead. They're still kind of alive. But we're going to have quite a bit of batteries to play with. So this got a little funner. We have, we have more experiments than just those nickel cadmium batteries up here. And I wanted to share with you guys something interesting. So he has something that he's done for years, which I think is brilliant. You get one of these ink and pencil erasers. And before you put the batteries in, you just clean off the metal and that gets rid of any of the residue of light oxidation or anything. And then you have no issues and you can even see the light polishing that it does. And you do it with the battery as well. Clean it off with a piece of paper, not blowing on it or not with your fingers, no oils on it. 
and you'll have perfect connection for another two years. I thought that was so cool. And now I'm curious what we can use these for because they might have a little bit of life left in them. All I can say is today was a good day to wear cargo pants. So here are the results from the Tenergy batteries. And it seems like it's pretty much stalled out at around 600 milliamp hours. That's about two thirds of its claimed capacity, and that's pretty good. I can probably take these back down to zero and do it again and get them up to 700 milliamp hours, but that's enough. Now, for these, this one, I plugged in this motor, and it almost went, but this one, when I plugged in the motor, it went. You have to start it first, but it does go. It's easy to stop. Shorting out the weaker one, we get starting at 180 milliamps, going down and down and down. And for the other one, we get starting at 250 milliamps and going down. Well guys, I've been trying to get this to work with the app, but it wouldn't work. And then I realized, oh, it says it's it comes off. It was at six volts. And uh, so me and Thais hooked together like 20 of these A123 Duracell batteries to get 50 some volts, because that's the only power supply we happen to have. And it actually worked. A little teeny teet of electricity woke up the BMS. You know, she just comes home with these batteries, just spills them out of her pocket, and the next thing you know, we need them. Yep, I came home with a bunch of them because I was replacing, uh, I was replacing these in um, smoke alarms. Right. Here, here, do you want to show the voltage? All right, let's see. Now, technically, it's a bad idea to have it on metal, but. Um, they they are on. It doesn't matter which way it goes. Okay. What I don't want to do. Is touch that metal. <laughs> and so we got fifty five volts. Now I'm gonna take some away. Let's see what we get. We get forty two volts. Try that. We get 33 volts. Not bad at all. <laughs> it's kind of cool, huh? Yeah, it's kind of yeah. cool. Wait until I show you how to hook 9 volt batteries together. Oh boy. Probably, you probably, have you ever tried that? No. So, you, so <laughs> 9 volt batteries, you can, you can make them zigzag, but they add 9 each time. So you can get like 300 volts from them. Didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, it's time to test out these. I've had them sitting, fully discharging for, oh, three hours, something like that. And
<laughs> Came back up to three volts now. Might need to go longer, but um, these little things right here always get in my way. I might just file them off of my batteries eventually, and my uh, multimeter eventually. You have to pull them way far. Three volts again. You know what? Let's go with point four. Hmm, a little bit high. I guess we can actually see the memory effect disintegrating right before our, our eyes. Okay. Oh wow, I looked at it now and on the second time discharging, it's discharging more. I'm curious where this will go. So guys, there's been some developments. I charged this pack for a little bit and then I realized, you know, one of the cells was heating up and then I charged the other one and another one of the cells was heating up and I immediately took that cell out, tried charging it a bit. It just wasn't ha having it. And I work on the three cells from one pack that are still good. I set it to charge and I totally forgot about it. And I already put 471 milliamp hours into it. So I think that just goes to show that if I'm gonna be using these batteries, I should just get double A cell holders in the same configuration. And then I can have the batteries in them. And then whenever they fail, I can remove just the battery that failed. Because three of these are still good. Half of the original capacity. And I'm going to let these cool down. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use these, the good ones, not for the emergency lights, but I'm going to couple them with these little humidity and thermometer sensors, temperature sensors, because the little cell button cell batteries that come with them, sadly, they, they go bad after like a month. They're not, they're not even worth the money. But I bought these by the 20 pack. I would love to use one of these with it, but unfortunately this one's about one and a half to two volts, not three volts. With three volts, the the entire LCD is just fully black. So, looks like we'll have to pair it with this. And as I find little broken solar panels in the creek, I can hook the solar panels onto it so they can self-charge. That's a great use for little solar panels from calculators and from yard lights, all sorts of stuff. Because I've already found several solar panels and I made one and gave it to a relative and it's still working. So... I wasn't able to repair any of these packs, but I was able to save three quarters of the cells. And these I'll take, and I'll take those to recycle at Staples, just like the other one. But these other batteries, I think I'm going to be able to use. Well, guys, I've spent the weekend and the past few days tinkering around with rechargeable batteries and non-rechargeable batteries. I think it's time for me to finish my Makita video and leave this be. I have the sad news that after letting these batteries sit for a few days, they only have 140 milliamp hours. So they basically are capacitors. What can I use these for? They're three volts. I mean, I've already found one use, but yeah. 
I think that's pretty much all of the experimentation I'll have to do with all these emergency light and fire alarm batteries for now. And I should get this video going and then I can start working on the Makita battery because otherwise this stuff will sit out forever. <clears throat> and forgive me for my voice, it's early in the morning. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya.